All right. Um, yeah, I'm Zach from Support. I guess nobody else has introduced themselves yet. Oh, sorry. No, that's come on. Um, everyone else, you want to introduce yourself? Of course. No. Okay. Go for it. I, am Jonah. <laughs> I work with Zach. There you go. And okay. others. So today in our webinar, we're going to go over the Cobra Equipment Anatomy. Um, so first, we're just going to kind of brief through a few things. So the various types of equipment uh, that we offer. Right, so we've got the 18R2 firing remote. We've got a 6Q6M module, uh, an 18M module, so 18 Qs, a 36, a 72, and of course the audio box and various slats and cables and other accessories. So we're just going to give over an overview of the 18R2 remote. So it's a handheld remote master controller of the entire show. Uh, controls all firing modules, and of course, all your audio boxes and anything really synced to it. And then you've got a few options in terms of how you fire your show, whether it be a manual push button, scripting, or stepping. And then you can check continuity, single strength, and all that from your remote. And then uh, some advanced features, so the control panel, uh, dead man trigger, uh, SMPTE, which is coming in 5.1 firmware. And of course, it is built into the command center. So some people asked in the earlier uh, webinar kind of battery life on some of our products. So with the 18R2, you're looking about seven hours plus on um, active operations. And then you've got 1,500 feet line of sight from your remote to your first module, or we've got the 18, 36, and 72, and then the newly uh, to come 6M module. And then one thing a lot of people don't know is actually all of our modules support nine volt battery. Um, this, even the 72 and, sorry, the, um, the 36 and 72 Q modules, they also support nine volt, but on top they all support the LiPo rechargeable and then various external power options. So you've got onboard cues, slats, and our newly introduced quick plugs. And then we've got two operations uh, with the, the modules there. We've got a test function, and then we've got, of course, the arm and ready to go and fire your show function. And then on the battery side for the 18M, you've got uh, five hours of active operation and 24 hours of standby. And then if you're using nine volt batteries, um, sorry, one second here. Oh, uh, that's actually just just a little clarity yeah. on the 18M with the 18MB with the modules that we're selling. That battery life is actually much greater than that. It's actually about 20 hours of active operation and over 60 hours of of sleep mode operation. So this would this would have been an old old chart from a bit ago. So yeah, and then in terms of the number of matches you can fire, so you can do 10 in series for E match or four in parallel. Okay. Uh, that right with the lipo actually you can do up to eight in parallel so that's actually with the nine volt you can do uh, four in parallel ten in series but with the lipo you can actually do up to eight and then actually with external power you can do up to twelve in parallel okay and then for our let me see here sorry for our thirty six q module uh, once again as I said you can do nine volt battery takes three just as any other modules do active hours you got eight and then sleep you've got twenty. And then we've got the LiPo options uh, there, which is 18 hours and 36. And then with external power, depending on the battery, obviously it can be no limit there. Um, and then same range in terms of uh, from your 18R2. But the cool thing with the 5.0 firmware on our modules is the range is to the first module, but each additional one can provide you with an additional 1,500 feet of range uh, with, the, with the mesh there. Uh, one second here. And that's the 72. So uh, same uh, battery life, eight hours on the active and 20 hours sleep, and then 18 and 36 for the LiPo. Okay, and then we've got the audio box. So a standalone audio uh, playing device. It supports 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, uh, the left and right RCA. You've also got the XLR option. So with that, uh, Cobra and all of our equipment being very modular, you can go ahead and upgrade various parts. And if you just bought the audio box as is, you can go ahead and upgrade to the XLR at any time, or of course you can purchase it with that function. And then it plays uh, through MP3. 
And then one also uh, little known thing is you can use multiple audio boxes. So if you've got either different locations or you want to send audio to a PA, but also maybe an FM transmitter, and you want to use two devices, you can go ahead and use two audio boxes to do so. Um, and on the battery life, one thing to note, uh, we get a common question. So with the battery life, we're fully aware that the double A's, uh, right, which uh, Zach is going to get to here. Go ahead, Zach. Yeah, sir. So the battery life on the audio box, um, it does take uh, three AA batteries and it's about two and a half hours of active operation. Uh, so the recommendation would be have a set of batteries that you use for any testing. And then when you're going to go ahead and do your show, put a new pack of Energizer in there. Um, we are definitely working on the LiPo upgrade option for that device. So that's really going to help alleviate uh, that concern. And also touching back on the 18R2 remote, uh, you'll be seeing a LiPo upgrade on that as well, giving you just crazy amounts of battery life. Yeah, and also with the audio box, I do believe that with that LiPo option on the audio box, uh, we, do, we will also support external power, although the audio box LiPo itself should have a very sufficient amount of power and, um, and also an LCD screen on the audio box as well as part of that kit. Too. So um, and I know everyone's asking when. Um, I can assure you that it is uh, in the final stages of development. The HNR2 LiPo kit is further along, much further along than the um, the uh, the AudioBox LiPo kit, but both are again in the in the, in the final kind of stages of, of development. So, and then just a quick overview of the boot sequence for your HNR2. So it's going to tell you your firmware, your power level and it will do the uh, device test, and then any number of scripts that are loaded onto the remote. And then boot sequence for your 18M. So same, you got your firmware. You're gonna show your module address, and then the uh, power mode, so your 9.0 for your uh, nine volts, your 12 volt, 14.8, and so forth. And then your power level. So one thing um, some people may not know is that with the, the modules, they have the three nine volt batteries. The 1P being the 9-volt battery that's in charge of the operations of your module. And then you've got your uh, 2P, which is your two lower 9-volt batteries. And that's actually used for firing. So often you can go through and only change out the top or the bottom two, depending on the various power levels. There's not always a need to go ahead and change all batteries in the module. And then, of course, the module test. And then 36, similar information, just displayed a little bit different. It was using the LCD display. So you've got your signal strength right off the bat, so no need to uh, push buttons on the, the module. It's going to show it to you right there. The bank, and I'll get uh, into that a little bit more when we go over the modules themselves. The channel, and then your module address. So how your Cobra gear is modular, topic of today. Drink. So as you can see here in the hands of my own, We've got the, the ProDAP plate. So if you've got a 36 or 70, sorry, 30, 36 or 72, yeah, uh, module, you can go ahead and use a ProDAP plate to quickly and easily change out the functionality of your device. Once again, go over that here in the hands-on in just a moment. And then you've got your 18M, which has quick plug upgrade, but also has the LiPo upgrade. So if you're stuck with nine volt batteries and you wanna give yourself some extra juice or just a little bit longer runtime, uh, we do have the ability to upgrade the module and it's something you can do at home, um, but you can upgrade the module to the LiPo rechargeable kit there to give yourself that, that extra power. And then 18R2, we've got, oh, spelling error on my end. Uh, we got SIMTI and dead man functionality. And cables, 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 of course. And then audio, bo audio box upgrade options. So as I said before, we've got the XLR and the uh, newly coming at some point here in the future, the LiPo and LCD display. And then we're gonna go over the quick plugs. And the big thing with our system being modular is the ability to upgrade everything and change, do repairs on the fly all by yourself. So no need to send your gear in if you're comfortable doing the repairs yourself. So generally the tools that are needed, just a uh, Phillips screwdriver and a clean place to work or if a dirty place if there's no other option and we'll go over how to swap out a Q strip and recommended spare part kit so if you're on a shoot site some things to, to have at your disposal would be an extra Q strip or two 
spare antenna, uh, and a battery door there. So one thing that I wanted to touch on, and some of you have probably done this yourself, but you probably have gone and used our system for something completely different than what it was designed to do. So in the, the image here on the far left, we've got a dynamite uh, TNT plunger box. So by using the uh, dead man control, uh, you can go ahead and, and if you have any questions on how to do this, just feel free to email. But uh, you can go ahead and use the two SMPTE wires to control um, and allow the current to flow through. And once that plunger is pushed down, that would actually start either your script or it can just start a simple uh, step event or it could start uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, um, the, the step wires. Sorry, the step wire, what is, yeah, sorry. SMPTE. <laughs> yeah, my apologies. So the step wires is what you'd use and then that would go ahead and start an effect. And then there's also controlling things like solenoids, uh, confetti cannons, and other effects that are used in things like haunted houses. And they've got an image of a customer that is uh, using a module, sorry, module on a helicopter to do a promotion. And, and one thing just to add to what Zach's saying is, I, in, in, what Zach's saying is there's a lot, when we design the Cobra system, so much of the design is very modular. We're not the type of company that, you know, if you, open up your module. There's no little sticker within the unit that if you tear that sticker, you can't call us and get help. We're not going to void any warranties if you want to use the system in a creative fashion. So we absolutely encourage people to uh, you know, take advantage of the modularity, take advantage of the fact that we're using a lot of standard types of cables. So for example, the dead man uses a three pin XLR. Uh, you'll know that on a lot of our modules, we have DB25, Centronics 50 pin, uh, the new 6M has DB9, we have RJ11, RJ45. So there's lots of options and we're gonna be showing you some of those today. And so it's very common for people to take those cables, to cut them, to take those wires and build them into custom applications that they're creating. So, you know, we do encourage you to try to use Cobra's modular design in such a way that fits your needs. Uh, you can come to us with help. We're not gonna say, I'm sorry, you opened up the unit your, your warranty is voided. We are no longer going to assist you. Instead, we're going to try to help you with whatever, you've, that whatever you're looking to do. Um, obviously, if you, uh, you know, completely damage the unit and it's something you did, we may not warranty it. But if it's anything on our end, well, we're obviously happy, happy to warranty that system. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. Okay. And I hope everyone had a drink there when Scott said modular. I did. <laughs> I didn't, but oh, I did. Okay, so we're gonna go into the live demonstration part. So give me one moment to get. Do a poll, Joel. Yeah, Joel. for sure. Joel. Let's get a poll. I was typing a long question answer, but you want to do oh. <laughs> poll? Sure, we'll do a poll. Module poll. Module, module poll. General, general poll to see what kind of equipment you have. Oh, and Zach is showing his uh, dog. So go ahead and drink. Touche. Sex dog drink. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> okay, and what are the results on that there, Joel? If you haven't answered yet, it's kind of letting them come uh, in. Uh, I was rushing everybody. What type of dog do you have, real quick, while we're waiting? Yeah. Uh, American, my dog, American Bulldog. Funny because he's Canadian. Yeah, that is kind of strange. <laughs> What's going on with that? Mm. Sorry, I think we've got a system connection issue here. All right. A lot of ATMs. They're very versatile. They can change and do what you need. All right, so yeah, we're going to go into, head into the, the hands-on section. Um, so I'm going to go through each different piece of equipment and kind of just go over the various options starting with the 18M. We'll get a nice close-up view on that there. Okay, so this is the 18M firing module, 18 Qs. Um, this one is the LiPo rechargeable battery upgrade as I was mentioning before. And then the being a system that you can change and configure as you need, we've also got the, the quick plug option. So you can go ahead and use quick plugs. And as Scott said, with our ability and 
um, the various cable connection options. In this example, we've got an RJ45 connection on each Q-strip. So you can go ahead and, and do a custom install or um, just use that with our 6S slats to kind of spread things out. But that's there as well. Okay. And then I just wanted to touch on with the, the ATM, that upgrade kit. So as I said, with everything being modular and kind of do it yourself in terms of any repairs or upgrades, that was the focus with this as well. So when you get your, your upgrade kit, you've got your, this is your, your charge board, your power adaption board, adapter board, sorry. Uh, and then you've got your battery and any additional features and things you need to actually make it rechargeable. And I'll show one a little bit more with it's kind of uh, exploded here, just a second. And we'll also provide some links in the description for any of the, we're gonna try to do our best once we post this video to have links in the description for the upgrade kits. Um, but with the 18M upgrade kit specifically, um, uh, you do need to have the wireless reprogrammer to be able to calibrate the unit, but that's all explained on the, on the page, so. Okay. So with the ATM, I'm going to go into a little bit on the repair side um, with this, this module here. So we're going to go ahead and take a look and open this up and just uh, see. So say you're on a shoot site and you've got everything. You've had somebody run over the module with a truck or whatever, and you've got a Q-strip broken. You've got an internal antenna broken. It's really easy to go ahead and take the six screws off of the front of the module and then the four off the back to go ahead and open that up. And with it, it's everything's just plug and play. Very easy to go ahead and take things, swap them out as needed. And then from a Q strip, see if I can get a closer angle on this here for you. Or a zoom level, I guess. It's very easy to just go ahead and pull that out and take that. And as, as Scott said, like some companies would not want you to do this yourself and tell you, no, you have to pay and send it overseas or whatever to, to get it repaired or whatnot, but feel free to open it up and, and try it out. Just when you are swapping a Q-strip over, just make sure you do take that water grommet and swap that over to the new one there. go and not only can a repair be done yourself an upgrade can be done yourself so this is our um, quick plug Q strip so in terms of the system you can have all three rows of a Q, uh, quick plug you can have two you can have one you can really customize it as you you choose so we go ahead and swap this one out here once again um, people, people did notice a, a, a bit of stress cracking uh, that can happen if things are a little too tight, but what if you do see that stress cracking, uh, that will not expand beyond that. So if you have done that to your module, don't worry about that. Um, there's never a case where it's not like it's going to shatter like glass at any point. So just, this is, I know Zach's got some personal equipment here, so. Yeah, I've had it for quite some time. <laughs> and then the same thing, you'd go ahead and put the, the Q-strip in there. When you do the, the quick plug upgrade, um, you do have the, the standoffs and everything that you would need to actually install this correctly and they'll be provided to you as well. And one thing to note, Zach, and I think you showed it before with the key switch, it's very common that we'll receive modules that are in quite a damaged form, you know, where they've been impacted by shells, where they're burned. And as long as that mean motherboard is in place, really everything can be replaced, you know. So even like if you notice the cracking on the plastic or whatnot, Enclosures are fairly inexpensive and you know all these parts are fairly inexpensive and we and again We can ship them to you so you don't have to be out of your equipment uh, Everything's very easy to install on your own and in fact on the website if you go to the product section There's an entire replacement parts area where all of our replacement parts are easily purchased and um, and self installable so we took a lot of time to make sure that you know that you could do a lot of these repairs on your own you know especially for our international customers who aren't able to ship stuff easily to us. Um, oh, drink for Zach's dog. Yeah, good. 
<laughs> do you have any uh, fun polls, Joel? You want to do maybe one fun poll? All right, we're going to throw a fun poll. All right, what is the one product you wish Cobra would make? Well, slat shaped sleep delay. I can't talk. <laughs> Slats shaped like letters are coming out next week, so you don't have to worry about that one. A module snorkel. I, I'm voting for the Google Alexa integration to, to start firing my show, but hey, I think that's yeah. a really safe feature. I already know my favorite, but I'm very People curious. found the, the secret answer at the bottom there. Did they? Oh. <laughs> oh, darn it. We shouldn't have put that one in there. We should have. That's funny. Well, well, then we're just gonna have to vote for uh, choice number two. Is gonna have to win. Mm. I don't know. Smart home integration seems like it's kind of in second place. You really? You only, you only get one match in a box for that five hundred foot one. Okay. All right. What do, do you have the results, Joel? Or are you still waiting? I'm still letting trickle in. Continue on. I'll share it once they're done. Okay. okay. And uh, of course, the 18R2, I've got the upgrade options on that. We've got the uh, SMPTE upgrade there. So with 5.1, you'll be able to use uh, time code 1 and time code 2. So time code 2 has the ability um, to stop the, the script when the time code feed stops, uh, and as well start it when it starts, whereas the time code 1 is just going to keep going once it's started there. And then the dead man control. So as... We were mentioning earlier the dead man control can be used for a, a few things, whether it just be the, the, the dead man functionality to stop the show in the event of uh, the operator getting incapacitated or by doing a custom configuration where you actually would take this apart and use the, the wires from the step function to go ahead and make your custom plunger or your um, kick drum. We actually had a customer do that as well where they would attach it to the kick drum, uh, the, the bass, and so every time that was hit, uh, it would hit the step button, creating the next effect to happen there. So once again, just these are things you can do and you upgrade it your own. So if you had purchased the 18R2 and you want to purchase the dead man upgrade, we'll send you the replacement back and all the wiring needed and you go ahead and do that yourself. And uh, same with the, the SMPT upgrade there too. And audio box. So if you haven't uh, looked at the audio box yet, if you're into pyro musicals, definitely a super handy feature to have. Uh, allows your audio and your script to stay in perfect synchronization. So no more uh, one, two, three, go on two devices, though that works, but um, that's the audio box. And as I said, you can get the XLR upgrade uh, to do that as everything is very modular and you can just do it all yourself at home. And I, I'm a shooter myself, so I like to write on all my mod or my cases. So if you do that as well, put your hands up because I think it's super handy. Even though the audio box is pretty obvious what it is, but anyways. All right, so the 6M. So this is our smallest Q count, heavy duty, um, really industrial, great device. Uh, pretty popular uh, so far in terms of feedback we've gotten from the special effects industry. So great if you're hitting, uh, doing body hits or anything like that, you can actually put this on an actor's belt. And then you've got that small 6Q module, far more convenient than attaching an 18M onto an actor, um, which I'm sure has been done, but hey. And with that, uh, being that they have your options, you can change things how you need it, how they fit on the fly. We've got some upgrade options for the 6M. So this is our quick plug terminal block and our standard speaker wire. And then also the RJ45. So you can connect this to a small 6Q slat if it's on a truss. Um, and I believe we're also working on the RJ11 Airburst, right, Joel? Yeah. So that if you're doing Airbursts, having this in a truss with the mounting bracket is far easier than a larger uh, module like the uh, 18M. 
Now, one thing that I wanted to point out, if any of our customers in the webinar uh, do special effects, is the cool thing about this is that you can go ahead and wire up an actor uh, with any squibs uh, prior to the shoot, and then you don't have to worry about having a module on them, right? So yeah, you can turn the power off and do all that kind of safety stuff, and you're, you, you've got your remote that's gonna be the one that actually fires something. So there's various safety levels in place, but also you can actually just completely remove the module from the, the terminal block, and then we have our DB9 shunts that can go on there to completely shunt the, the circuit there. So if you don't know what a shunt is, that's fine. Uh, it just completes the circuit, so there's no ability for any static uh, discharge to build up in your igniters and cause them to fire. Um, rare, but it, it definitely does happen. So with this, you wire up your actor, and then you're good to go. And then your chute comes, and then you just go ahead and plug it in, and you're good to go. Uh, one thing on the 6M2 is that uh, we're going to be doing, obviously, when we release it, we'll do a full webinar, uh, talk about price point, things like that. So I think part of the goal here today was just to use this as one additional example of modularity, but uh, stay tuned as the 6M. Um, it's already in beta currently, and um, will be coming out shortly. Okay. Uh, did you do that? Zoom it out here. Okay, so I'm going to go into our larger Q count modules. Um, so this one is the 36M, right? So the big thing with our modules like the 36 or the 72, we add a core in terms of how they're designed to, to be modular. I know it sounds like I'm just pushing that, but it really is, it, it's down to the core. They're, they're designed very similarly. So in this example, we've got the 36M and we've got this side exits, right? So if you've got any... Uh, slat op options that you'll be using, you can do that. Or if you don't need any slides, you can obviously just use the module itself. But at the base of it, if I go ahead and open this up here, as it's connected, just connected with a, a standard ribbon cable, right? And then under here, you've got the module itself. So in the event um, the battery is not working, whatever it may be, you can obviously take that out. And as I said before, you can go ahead and use nine volt batteries to provide you with operations and firing and everything like that. And with the design of it, it's, if one show needs one setup, another show needs another, you can very easily go ahead and remove the pro adapt plate and then place another one on that I'm gonna go into um, a little bit more with the 72, because I do have another one here, there. One second. And Aaron, yes, slats can be added to the 18M. There's, uh, if you go to our website and type in the word slat connector, there is an upgrade kit. It's about $40-ish uh, for an 18M to support DB25 slats. So that is an option that we do make available. Yes. Okay, and then this is the, the 36M, but with the onboard queue. So you can see you have your full 36 queues. You've got your uh, Centronix 50 and your DB25 connection. And then just like the other one, right, the, the base of this module, the base of the module underneath is the same, right? So if one day you, you purchase this one, and then down the road you wanted to switch everything over to quick plugs, very easily you can take this module out of the large pro dat plate and go ahead and configure it as your, your heart desires, really. Yeah, and that's, and I, I mean, obviously it's the same core module that's being used on everything. So if you've got quick plugs, slats, onboard cues, every 36M uses the same core module, every 72M uses the same core module, and any ProDAP plates for the 72M or the 36M are 100% interchangeable, right? So yep. all the pinouts are the same, and so it's a completely modular design in that sense, um, even down to like, for example, what Zach is showing you right here with, with two Centronix 50 pin connectors on this product. Yeah, so this is the module, the, the 72M, no case, no nothing, just as is with the, the Pro DAP plate. So if you're doing a shoot in which you need the Centronix 50 slats, great. Um, this is a good opportunity to bring in some slat cables that we're bringing out here. Okay, so this is our Centronix 50 to RJ45 slat cable. 
So you're doing a shoot in which this is kind of the best route for you to take. You can go ahead and easily. And this is this is actually a new product. It's not yet released on our website that Zach's showing, but this is the ability to connect the Centronics 50 pin uh, cable to actually six uh, RJ45s, more commonly known as like a Cat5, you know, or a Cat6 cabled connection, and you can run those out to 6S slots. But you can also use just our regular Centronics uh, 50 pin cable to connect to a 36Q flat, whether that's a 36Q quick plug slot, uh, standard speaker terminal, small or large. So we have a variety of different options, but this is just one option. And, and again, it's kind of showing how a 72M, you know, you may purchase it in a large case, or you may decide, you know what, I just want it to be in a boot and I want two 36Q slats, you know, or maybe I want to use four uh, 18Q slats, or in the case uh, of Zach's, what's showing right now is uh, quick plugs. Mm. Or as Scott was saying just a minute ago, four <laughs> <laughs> of the DB25 slats there. And right. it's, it's super quick, super easy just to swap these out, right? There's no, literally no tooling required, just pressure of your thumbs to tighten everything back up. And then you've got a module that's completely configured in a different way that's going to help you in this particular shoot. But you know, the, the Centronics 50 may have helped you in another shoot, right? So you don't have to have multiple modules if you don't need them. You can just purchase the additional Pro Adapt plates and configure them as you need it there. And then as uh, Scott mentioned, we also have the, the boots as you've been seeing. We've had uh, most of the modules I've displayed have been in the large armored cases there. Um, but we also have the boots. So these are a silicone uh, protective flame resistant, water resistant. Uh, if you haven't seen the video on this, I believe we have a video that we light them on fire and there's some money involved. So <laughs> uh, that, that's there as well. Um, but yeah, these are at least $36.99 for the modules. So all you do is you go ahead and slide them in. And with the, the core module being the same dimensions of an 18 in terms of the, for the most part, like the base will be the same. Uh, you may want to go with a different top boot, obviously, depending on what configuration you have here to allow for any uh, slack cables and wires to, to work there. Yeah, basically, we have two different heights of boots. We have one that's a uh, lower height that's for the, like the traditional 18M speaker terminals. And then for anyone that's using slats, we have a um, kind of a taller version that supports that the right angled uh, slat connector that's coming out. But boots are an awesome option. They're fairly inexpensive. You can mount them. Uh, they're a great, great way to protect your units. And like we tell a lot of people on the phone as well, is if you don't, um, if you don't want to purchase any of our slat options, you know, you can always throw a five gallon bucket right on top of the unit. The RF will pass right through it for the wireless. Um, and there's plenty of other different protective options. Like people can take fire blankets, uh, you know, cut them into little squares, put a hole in it for your antenna. So there's a lot of really creative options that you can take when you're covering your units that are fairly less expensive where if you don't, um, you know, if you don't want to purchase our, our protective accessories specifically. Yeah, now I wanted to go into a little bit more because we mentioned it uh, a bit there in terms of uh, slats. We will have a full webinar, I believe it's next week um, for slats and igniters. Um, but this is gonna give you a, a, just a quick overview of how they can they can be used as well. So once again, if you had a module that um, was standard speaker wire, but it had slat connections, and you didn't want to swap the whole module over to quick plugs, you could easily just purchase a quick plug slat right there and go ahead and have that quick plug functionality on your module without converting the whole module there. Um, and then yeah, as I was talking before in terms of shunts, especially with like the 6M and being special effects, um, this is, a DB25 uh, shunt here. So I'll zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, and you can actually see on the shunt, a lot of people don't notice it. When they get it, they're like, hey, it's not, it's not done. But actually, that, that's a little PCB board. So it's a very small PCB board that actually internal to that board has traces where every one of those 25 pins is actually connected, right? And so when you place that onto a slat, now in the case of series slats, you'll want to have two shunts, one on each end, for that slat to be completely shunted. But if it's a parallel slat, you only need 
one shunt on the parallel slat. And by shunting your slat, if you're connecting any product to that slat in advance of your show, like Zach mentioned before, if there's any electrostatic discharge or anything that potentially could cause that EMASH to fire uh, inadvertently, the shunt is going to prevent that because the electricity is going to take the path of least resistance, which is through the shunt and not through your EMASH. Um, and so then you can, in some cases, if you are transporting product or if you have other uh, ways in which you're setting up your product and wiring it in advance, you can wire everything directly into the shunt, I'm sorry, into the slat, and you can shunt it uh, and leave it there feeling comfortable that any, um, you know, that your EMATCH is not gonna fire inadvertently. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, and then one of the last uh, topics there that I had was uh, quick plugs in general. Um, so we had a lot of questions regarding quick plugs and how they were configured. I don't know if Scott, you wanted to, to touch on this one? Uh, no, I've been told that every time I interrupt you, everyone has to drink. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, was, that was just between us, but that's okay. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll stop interrupting. But anyway, why not? I'll just talk a little bit about Quick you liked the, you had a really enthusiastic spiel, talk about them earlier. I did. So in our 12 o'clock, I was very excited about quick plugs. Um, no, I'm very proud of our, of our, so the quick plugs, we didn't actually really invent quick plugs per se. They existed in the market before we kind of brought them into the Cobra world. Uh, but one of the things that I feel like we're on QVC right now and we're like, <laughs> like selling some shiny shiny slide. <laughs> uh, but the, <laughs> we're very proud of our quick plug receptacles. So we actually, you can purchase, uh, they're not actually called quick plugs in the market, uh, but if you're on DigiKey or something, you can actually find these connectors that you're seeing on our, on our slats. Uh, but they're a little different. They're, they're not as tall, they use different material, uh, and they've got like a little uh, hinged wall that if you pull the uh, plug out, they can cause that wall to break. And so what we did within our quick plug design is our receptacles have a couple of changes to make them better. Uh, one of those is that we actually increase the height of the wall. So if you'll see, uh, Zach, my assistant here, will attempt <laughs> to, try, to try to break some of the pins on those uh, quick plugs. Uh, and if you kind of center that a little bit, Zach. Sorry, yeah, there you go. Failing into your QV, uh, QVC <laughs> model. And, uh, and you'll notice he's having a very difficult time causing those pins to get bent. So if you've got operators that are very forceful with your equipment, uh, by increasing the height of those walls and also introducing walls in between the pins and also having guides, which are kind of difficult to see, uh, but there's actually those kind of two guides that you see on the bottom. Well, if the shadowing was right, those guides actually exist on both the top in the bottom, and those also allow you to help guide the, the plug within there. We've also replaced the, uh, we've replaced, the, you've got some compliments on your, oh, th oh that was Jonah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the pins are made of beryllium copper, which is a stronger, more corrosive resistant material. Okay. And um, in addition to that, uh, I think that's primarily it, but it, essentially it, it adds to the longevity uh, of those receptacles. In addition to that, any of the, the quick plugs that we sell, whether they're on our talons or the MGG Firewire initiators, we do a, uh, a good job making sure that we've chosen the right gauge plug. We've also dab hot glue into them. That hot glue is important for kind of maintaining the connection. Um, and if you want, we have a great video on our website showing quick plugs. And the, uh, they're about seven times faster to to insert in and tear down is a breeze, right? So no more pricking holes in your thumb with pieces of copper wire, uh, use quick plugs. So they're actually quite popular. We've, uh, uh, anyway, they're, they're quite a popular product. I was very, very, we're very pleased with the popularity. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the modularity too. And the modularity, modularity. modularity. modularity, modularity <laughs> of quick plugs is great. So if you haven't tried them, try them. You can slowly convert your modules. You don't have to do it all at once if you want to just you know, test them out and see how you like them. So, And if you call right now, we'll send you a free set of steak knives. A free set of steak knives with every purchase <laughs> conversion kit. All right, awesome. So I think, awesome. Um, wow, Bo, that's like an incredibly complicated question. 
I don't, that really depends on, there's, you know, we'll need, we need like a big spreadsheet for that one. Though. But uh, generally speaking, what, one, of the, one of the biggest benefits for quick plugs is that people find that it allows, what it's doing is even though you may not, you know, obviously it's gonna reduce your labor savings, right? But one thing about quick plugs is it allows you to get your shoot site set up. So oftentimes you've been a shoot site, you're late, you're not getting things done in time, done, uh, getting things done in time. It allows you to get done sooner and um, having more time to deal with unexpected issues uh, and, and, and dealing with things by having faster setup. So. Oh, shoot. Oh, that's drinking cue. I think in terms of like, um, uh, equipment and going over anything like that, um, I believe unless there's something else I missed, if anyone can think of anything, I think we can go into if we have any questions. Yeah, I think, yeah, thank you, Zach. That's awesome. Uh, definitely covered a lot of areas of equipment. Um, at this point, we'll definitely take any, we'll go ahead and this will kind of be our formal Q&A. We'll have two phases of Q&A. This will be our formal Q&A. We will also have, uh, once we finish up, we'll have an informal Q&A where we can all just kind of hang out and answer all kinds of different questions. So if you're asking questions, uh, try to keep them on, hopefully in part with some of the anatomy stuff and we can just rotate uh, any of the panelists, feel free to jump in and join along if you like. I jumped in with a poll. We have a poll. Yep. As everyone thinks about questions. Uh, that's a good one. All right. Is there a different way? So D Dustin, is there a different way to connect multiple matches into a single queue with quick plugs? Right now with quick plugs, uh, if you do want to put multiple matches into a single queue, uh, we do ask that you simply cut the wire off the, the, the first quick plug and just use a traditional uh, process of, of, of wiring them that you would use that you would normally do. Uh, we are working on some kind of cool little uh, series in parallel breakout boards that will make that process a little simpler. But for now, you kind of have to cut the wires and take a more traditional approach with quick plugs. And right. And uh, what's the dead man kit for the added to the H&R2? Just go to the website and search at the product, search at the top for just dead man, and that'll bring that up. Uh, but I think it's called the dead man upgrade kit or something. But if you just search the site for that. That's the uh, dead man control. Dead man control. Uh, yep. Steve. I think we I'm, sent the, the link there too, but I can uh, it again. Excellent. Um, and also make sure if you're on the chat, try to throw, throw your questions in Q and a, um, but we can do our best to chat answers in there as well. I know you sent out a question regarding future upgrades. One of was for DMX or MIDI control, any update, uh, we'll be covering that. I think once we do, once five, one gets released, we'll cover that, uh, in more depth. We're probably not talking too much about DMX or MIDI within this webinar. What P level do you recommend for changing your nine volt batteries, say for a 30 minute scripted show? Um, we get this question a lot. There's a long winded answer to it, but generally speaking is, you know, you know, know how long your show is and where your battery levels are. So if you understand how long your batteries last within your units and you know how long your show is, that'll help gauge whether or not you have enough battery life. And I know that sounds like a very simple common sense answer, but that's really the best point. The one thing I would recommend is if you're doing very large shows, and you have like you know 50 to 100 plus modules, or or even less than that, even if it's 25, and you're using nine volt batteries. You know, on our website, you can buy nine volt batteries for uh, you know I think it's like 15 dollars for 12 batteries. It's not too expensive. So if you're buying something on our site, add the batteries. It's not going to increase your shipping too much, or if at all, and just replace your P1 batteries on your modules. You know, each each time. Uh, so then you just don't have to deal with any of that stress. Obviously with lipos, you can go ahead and, and charge them. Uh, have you guys completely eliminated the longer DB25 cables with the 90 degree end so we don't have to buy the extra 90 degree connector to convert it? Uh, all of our DB25 cables, anything greater than one meter has a, uh, uh, oops, that just gets deleted. Oh, That's fine. Has, it's okay. It's okay. We use, uh, we have a one, uh, I think it's a eight inch uh, right angled straight to right angle. Uh, the, the challenge was is to have to maintain stock for one, five, 10, 15, 25 uh, lengths within both DB25 and Centronix 50 and have to maintain right angle and straight angle connectors for every single one of those cables versus just maintaining straight to straight cables. 
and then having just the right angle adapter. And by doing that, it also gives you the benefit of removing that right angle adapter if needed. Uh, so, you know, I know that's not perfect, but I, I hopefully we haven't had too many complaints on that. Um, but if you do really want that type of cable, certainly email us and we can help. Uh, when you designed the quick plug Q strips, why didn't you make them the same width as the original Q strips on the 18M? Well, the Q strip itself fits within the same bay. The width of the quick plug Q strip itself is specific to the, the width of the plug that's going in. And we wanted to make one strip that supported all of it uh, versus separate individuals. I think if you're, if that's the direction you're going, I don't think we thought that far as to make the individuals, but it is a six bay strip. And, um, you know, hopefully that works. There should be enough room uh, where they're kind of hugging in there together. But also to, to kind of comment on that, it also yeah. allows for the addition of the RJ45, the Cat5 connection, right? So by having the smaller plug part, right, versus where the onboards, you're taking up the whole strip there, that allowed for that RJ45 to go in. Yeah. If it was that, a full width, we, we couldn't fit it in. Right. Yeah, and unfortunately some, yeah, and normally we're incredibly detail-oriented with that, but hopefully that's it's not. Uh, will the quick plugs ever be made for traditional e-match versus MJG initiators? That's a great question. Uh, we don't sell traditional e-match today. We sell the MJG initiators because um, we're not really an e-match seller, and that does require, you know, typically a, a Type 54 ATF license. Um, however, if you do work with a manufacturer and they manu and they build your e-match, um, you know, we do offer the uh, the tool. Uh, this is actually the first time we've mentioned this in this webinar. So you can actually go to the quick plug section of our website and we do provide a link to the tool drink for, um, the, for attaching your own quick plugs. So we have worked with many companies to actually source and ship those tools directly to their manufacturer. Um, we can also, if you want, source the plugs themselves and even the shunts if you're interested. So, um, but we do, unfortunately, unfortunately we don't sell them. Um, if you do work with JTEC, if you work with MJG and purchase the JTEC brand, Ematch, uh, they, they do work with us and some of our larger clients for manufacturing those with quick plug. So it's absolutely a possibility to do that, but um, but obviously contact us at help at coverfiringsystems.com. We can help with that. Uh, firing in series in parallel with quick plugs, it works exactly the same way as any traditional Ematch. It just happens to have the plug on the end. And as I mentioned before, if you're putting multiple initiators into the same queue, uh, we, you know, right now today, we would recommend that you cut the wires and just twist and uh, splice them, you know, kind of how you would a traditional e-mash normally. Uh, what adapter comes with the 6M by default? Uh, that's a great question. We're going to, once we release it on the website, we're going to make that. I, I'm pretty confident that the uh, 6M terminal block Q adapter uh, will, uh, well, we should be a standard within that, but obviously there's other connectors that will make optional. Uh, accordingly, and there's also a flexible antenna, a, a kind of a more of a wire-based flexible antenna and a mounting bracket that's also an option for that as they, and, and again, once we, we'll obviously do a full webinar on the 6M going into that in detail once that's actually released. Uh, with slats, can you leave a shunt on one end of the slat opposite the DV25 cable that would be coming from the module? Would you leave a shunt on one end of the slat opposite the music coming from the module? that would still let the 18 positions fire without an issue, correct? When you purchase slats, does it come with one shunt or not two? Uh, if you have a series slat, you have to put a shunt on the final end of the slat that's at the end of your chain. So if it's just one series slat, you have to have a shunt on the end. If you have multiple series slats connected with cables on each of them, you have to have one shunt on the end. With parallel slats, you do not need any shunt. So series slats always come with one shunt, Parallel slats don't come with the shunt, but you can purchase shunts on our website. If you do place a shunt on a parallel slat, that will cause that parallel slat to not fire and always show continuity on all cues. We've had support cases where people put a shunt on a parallel slat and that prevented all cues from firing. What are you laughing at, Joe? Am I going? I'm always self-conscious. I think you're laughing at me. No, it's, it's not you. It's, okay. Uh, it's it's something else i promise all right it's okay uh it's my baby. I, oh it's your baby that's fine. i have a lot of talons uh tell me quick about quick plug adapter blues and can i make a town functional on the quick plug slat 
Uh, you can purchase the tool in the, and uh, you can go to the quick plug section of our website. You can purchase the tool and you can purchase, uh, we have links to purchase the quick plugs itself. It's a fairly expensive tool. It's like 300 plus dollars for the tool. So if you already have talons today and they don't have quick plugs on them, I would probably recommend that you just use the rest of your talons until they're gone. And then if you do want to upgrade to quick plugs, use that as a time to upgrade to quick plugs. And you can also partially upgrade your equipment. So if you still have a bunch, if you want to upgrade to quick plugs for some of your modules, go ahead and do that and buy quick plug talons or initiators and then use the old ones and then eventually convert everything if you like. Uh, 18M, James Young, 18M quick plug series slats. Do I need a shunt on the last end or both ends? Uh, just, on, just on the last end. Uh, but if you do want to shunt, truly shunt that series slat to prevent it from you know, ESD causing misfires on EMATCH, you would need a shunt on both, on both sides of that. Uh, Jeff Mann for the 18R2 and audio box, could I parallel another four and a half volt battery source to it and swap it out mid show? You can, I wouldn't, well, I, in theory you could. What, I, what we have seen a lot of people do is the, for the audio box, if you open up your unit, we've seen plenty of people drill a hole in the side of it, the, the, the battery box on the bottom has a plug that goes right into that unit. And all that is, is a five volt connect, you know, there's about four and a half volts, obviously, that come out of a, a three series wire AA batteries. But a lot of times people have used, you know, battery packs that you can use for charging phones, and they just custom wire a little harness that goes into that same plug. So you could technically uh, plug right into that same plug that the AA's go into, and you can power it externally. Uh, it's not a problem. Um, I wouldn't swap anything out mid-show. You shouldn't need to swap anything mid-show unless your show is really, really, really long. Um, but we have seen people do that, Jeff, with the audio box. Can I change the cable on the dead man to recoil soft cord? Uh, no, but I, no, no, but I mean, I guess you could, if you, if you had the proper cordage, you could quit. I, <laughs> cordage. If you had the proper cable, you could certainly do that on your own. Um, I know that we've, if you email us, I know we've changed the cable on that at some point. I, I know it was a little harder earlier and it may be softer right now. I know you sent a question out regarding future upgrades. One of those is DMX. And, oops, sorry. I think I already answered that one. Oh, someone can dismiss that one from Steve. When using RG45 with quick plug at the same time, is, is that in parallel? Yes, it is in parallel, Greg Robinson. An RG45 with a quick plug on the module at the same time is in parallel. But do we shunt a parallel slat prior to shooting for safety? I mean, you could, Brian, if you're, if you're setting up in your actual show on the shoot site and you're just plugging in normally, you know, I don't think you need to shunt your slats in the field. You know, obviously, whenever you've got fireworks in the field and people are walking around, they're generally safe. Um, however, if your fireworks are going to sit in a stored location, you know, sometimes people do set stuff up in their garage and they leave their fireworks in the garage connected to slats. In that case, yeah, I would probably feel a lot more comfortable if my slats were shunted, um, especially if you're using firewire initiators. If you're using talons, you don't have to worry as much because ESD doesn't have as much of an impact because it needs like a sustained current. But for traditional e-match or initiators, yeah, it, it can't hurt and shunts are fairly inexpensive. So that's the great thing as well. Uh, what are the limitations if I'm firing parallel and series in the same queue with LiPo? Example, two parallel wires going to four series, series igniters in one. Is that fine? That's a great question, Donnie. Um, so one of the things that we don't recommend is on the site is mixing parallel and series on the same queue. However, I will absolutely tell you that if you do have a bunch of series circuits and you want to wire them together in parallel, um, you know, they, they probably will fire and uh and you can we've actually had clients that fired a ton of like for example if you put 10 in series and then wired let's say four of those in 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 parallel um they may actually fire so what i know what we normally recommend is just run some tests if you want to do some you've got certain effects where you have to fire a ton on a single queue use your brand of e-match use your batteries and 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 run a test to see if it works for you and if it works if you times and also if you're testing do like 20 or 30 percent more than you expect to do in your show and if that's working for you then it should work fine within your show assuming nothing has changed what's the maximum amounts of slat you can use per module um so we can with the lipos you can fire up to eight in parallel and ten in series 
right? But that number kind of decreases as the distance goes on. If you go to our website and go to the support section, go to uh, user guides and go to our quick guide, it's a PDF document. The lower right corner, there's a little chart that you can use. One of the things we are working on is a, is a support portal. In that support portal, we're gonna have a lot more information uh, and even maybe some calculators that allow you to figure that out a lot easier. Because we get that question all the time. And for anyone that, that, that does have that question, feel free to email us at help at coverproductsystems.com. And we, help, we can help do the math based on your battery power, what you're looking to do, make some recommendations. A lot of times people ask between uh, heavy duty and, uh, and, and light cables. Uh, so why did Scott name Cobra? So I was a fan of G.I. Joe. Uh, I wasn't actually, I liked Mask. Do you guys remember that from the 80s? Mask? Does anyone born, know that? I wasn't thing? born yet, sorry. What's that? Wasn't you weren't born, born yet. yet. Anyway, so anyone that likes new Mask, it was like, a, it was, I don't know. They were pretty cool. They were just cool toys. Yes, thank you, Nicholas. Mask. I liked that. So I was more of like a Mask fan over G.I. Joe. Um, but that's not the reason. Uh, the reason that I named the company Cobra was because I like snakes. <laughs> And I used to, I wanted to be a herpetologist when I grew up. Uh, when I was in fourth grade, everyone out, went out to play recess and I would go to the library and I would read books on reptiles and amphibians. And I memorized the Green Autobahn Society book when I was younger. And, uh, and so anyway, that's why I named Cobra. I had, I think I had 14 snakes at one point, but I don't have any snakes anymore. And my mom hated me because of it. Uh, so I think we answered, are they in wire links and their ability to fire igniters similar to the, are wire links and their ability to fire igniters similar with the new RJ45? Yeah, the RJ45 connectors are, you know, for example, the DB25 to RJ45 adapter. I can't remember the gauge. Things. What's most important is the type of cable that you're using, whether it's you know, a cat five cable that may be 24 gauge, 26 gauge, 28 gauge, or a cat six that may be like a 23 gauge. And again, that's why within our support portal that we're creating, there's so much detail within that. And it's just always so difficult to answer that. Um, and again, the best way to, to do it is to get some guides from our website, ask us at help at cobrafiringsystems.com. And of course, trial and error practical testing is always the best way to ensure something's going to work during your show. I don't, Thomas, I don't know the difference between class A and B on the cat cable. So I'm, I'm not an expert on cat cable. I do know that um, there are differences, but well, uh, we are going to be selling some of that. We are going to be selling, I believe, 23 gauge cat six cable. Joel, hey, Zach, we had a question for you to say modular and then smile real big. I don't know if I could do that. It seems like something yeah, cynical. Kind of weird. He's already smiling. Yeah. Just say now he is. You're welcome. Part Part B was fulfilled. So. Oh, modular. Okay. Modular. Have a drink. Have a drink. Okay. All, all of you. I am waiting. There you go, Joel. And all, right. all of our people watching the webinar that is drinking, that are drinking modular tonight Excellent. on CNN. All right. Well, I mean, I, just, I think that was like a rapid fire Q&A. All right, well, cool. So I think, Zach, do you want to kind of close it out for the formal Q&A? Um... Yeah, for sure. So um, that's it uh, for this webinar. Stay tuned to next week where we talk about slats. And slats, and slats, 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 everybody. Yeah, so if you're interested in series versus parallel pros, cons, all those questions about maximum resistance checking and all that fun, come hang out.